With Mathematica, it's easy to turn anything into an interactive model. Thanks to a single command called manipulate, you can turn something like a static graphic into a sophisticated and dynamic model. So let's make another new section. I'm going to use Alt 4 to create this section cell and we'll call it Making Interactive Models. But you could use any of the other methods to do that uh, as well. I'm going to press the down arrow key to start a new input cell. And I'm going to plot the graph of sine of x since we seem to be using that uh, function a lot today. I'm going to type an equal sign to start a freeform input command and then I'm going to type graph of sine of x and evaluate. Once I get the result, I'm going to click on the Wolfram language command and throw away that freeform input and now I'm left with a clean, uh, nice and easy command that I can build upon. The command we're going to then use uh, is called manipulate and you can wrap it around any Wolfram language expression to create an interactive model. So let's put manipulate in a left square bracket to the left of the plot command and then a comma on the right and then a right square bracket to finish up uh, the command. Now we are missing some important information and Mathematica is alerting us to that uh, by putting in a red caret to highlight where it expects us to add in, uh, information to this command. What we need to do is introduce some parameter that we want to manipulate and, that, uh, and then where that red caret is we need to give Mathematica some basic bounds for that parameter. So I'm going to introduce a parameter called frequency by typing that into the square brackets for the sign command. And I'm also remembering to use the asterisk to indicate that I want to have frequency multiplied by x to make Mathematica realize that frequency and x are two different symbols. Now I go over to where the red caret is and I give Mathematica a range of values for this parameter, frequency, that I've just added. Since we give domains and ranges inside of curly braces, I'll add a pair of those and then I will put frequency comma 1 comma 5, just like we have seen with other functions. Instead, this time, my symbol is named frequency instead of something shorter like x. Now let's hit shift and enter together and we get a plot of the result, but we also get an interactive controller. In this case, it's a slider bar that is labeled frequency. And as we move that slider, we can see what happens as that value changes. Pretty impressive for something that was like 20 seconds of work once you cut out all of my talking. Now if you click that plus sign to the right of the slider, you get a set of video controllers that allow you to animate the controller and speed it up or slow it down uh, along with changing its direction. You also can get uh, an input field that shows the current value of frequency as the slider is dragged. And you can even uh, click inside, type a value, and then press enter, not, not shift enter, just enter to jump to that particular value. Now let's make our model a little more interesting by introducing a new parameter. This time let's add in a symbol called phase and we'll put that to the right of the X inside of the sign command so we'll end up with frequency times X plus phase. As we type this in you may notice a couple of things. First, the symbol phase is colored in dark blue and not the same teal color as the other symbols like frequency. This is because right now phase is undefined. So Mathematica doesn't know what it is and it's colored differently than frequency uh, which is defined as having a value from 1 to 5. In addition, you will see that the output is grayed out, meaning that the current input and output are out of sync. This is a really helpful way to know that the input has been modified and no longer corresponds to the former output. So in case you get interrupted or distracted and come back to your notebook later, you will see the grayed out result and realize that things aren't quite matched up uh, any longer. Okay, since we've added uh, the, the uh, value phrase, a phase as a new parameter, we need to give it a range of possible values. So we put a comma after the list that contains frequency and we'll copy that same syntax to make a new list for phase. Let's have phase go from 1 to 10 and then we'll hit shift enter to evaluate. Now our interactive model has two sliders, one of which controls frequency and the other of which controls phase. So Manipulate uh, does all the heavy lifting for us, which makes it really quick and easy to build these interactive models. Now let's go another step further by changing sign in our model to a new symbol that we'll call function. 
As before, we need to give Mathematica some choices for values that function can take on. So we start by creating a list to hold the values. This time, though, it doesn't make sense to give um, Mathematica numeric values if we are going to want to choose between different functions to graph. Then we should give Mathematica a list of choices. We can do this by creating a sublist, which contains sine, cosine, and tangent as possible options. And once we evaluate, we see that our model now lets us change frequency and phase using sliders. And we also have a new row of buttons that can be clicked to toggle between different functions to graph. Not bad for a beginner. And of course, we can also hide the Wolfram language commands and just show the interactive model, which is quite useful if you want your audience to focus on what you've created and not so much on how you actually created it. Now, making these models is pretty simple, and as, if, as you have seen, um, but we also have a huge repository of pre-built models for you to access. So you can use them with your classes or in your research or presentations to colleagues within a company or, or whatever. These models are freely available on our website at the Demonstrations Project. So let's create a new uh, subsection, and I'm going to use Alt-5 again to do that and we'll call it Demonstrations. Let's go to the Demonstrations Project site uh, actually now, which you can find by choosing Help in Demonstrations. Once I'm there, I can see the running tally of available demonstrations. I can also browse by topics like Mathematics, Business and Social Systems, Engineering and Technology, uh, and all of these others. You can also search by keywords as well. Let's click on one of the demonstrations on the front page, just to see an example of how they are presented. Now we see a snapshot uh, of what the demonstration looks like, along with an explanation of what this particular demonstration is trying to illustrate. There's also a contributor citation, since all of these demonstrations go through a refereed process before they are posted. If I find one I'd like, I can either download the demonstration as a CDF, which means I'll get an interactive version that I can run locally on my computer, or I can download the author code, which means I'll get a notebook with the necessary Wolfram language code to generate the model, which is useful in case I want to see how it was built, or in case I want to make some changes or tweaks to it uh, to customize the model to my particular needs. Now the demonstrations project is great because you have all of these thousands of pre-built models at your disposal. So if you are teaching a particular concept or you're looking for an example of how Mathematica might be used in a certain area, this pre-built repository is a great resource that you should check out. Chances are you'll find something that you can start using immediately without you having to build the model from scratch yourself. Uh, in the next video, we'll take a closer look at how to access computable data from the Wolfram knowledge base, or uh, also to import your own data from files like spreadsheets, and then we'll use this data uh, in our calculations.